audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. When God called Abraham, he promised to bless him and his seed. Now it's clear from the scriptures that this promise related to Abraham's spiritual seed, the church, and his physical descendants, the nation of Israel. When we look at the Jewish people, we see that they have been blessed in an extraordinary way. For example, on a per capita basis, Israel leads the world by far in research and technological creativity. Since the mid-19th century, about 25% of the world's scientists have been Jews. Also, Jewish winners of Nobel Prizes have been disproportionate, to say the least, being awarded no less than 129 prizes. Amazingly, in 1978, over 50% of the main contributors of the progress of mankind came from the Jewish people. That is about 0.25% of the world's population. Now, we could say so much more, but without a doubt, the nation of Israel is a glowing testimony to the fact that those whom God has blessed are blessed indeed. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And thank you for joining us. It's Phil here along with author and pastor Ken Legg. And this week we're looking at the blessing of Abraham. It's going to be quite an interesting topic this week, I'm sure, and some very interesting statistics you just shared with us there, Ken, about the Jewish people and how they just seem to stand out in so many ways among the nations of the earth disproportionately. Yeah, and I'm sure that they're aware of that fact themselves. Phil, probably you heard about the Jewish mother who introduced her two sons in this way. The doctor is three and the lawyer is two. Yeah, we don't tend to say that about our kids, do we? <laughs> when they're that little, at least anyway. What, what uh, insight they've got. You talked about the blessing that God promised to Abraham's descendants and didn't only refer to his natural seed, Israel, but to his spiritual seed, the church. Can you just talk about that a bit? Yeah, um, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 6, we're told that we are blessed with believing Abraham. And then in verse 14 of the same chapter, Paul speaks about the blessing of Abraham coming upon the Gentiles who are in Christ. Now, that's us. Now, let's just go back. We're talking about the blessing of God. Go back to the beginning. After creation, the first act of God towards man was to bless him. Mm. We read, then God blessed him and said to him, be fruitful and multiply. Now, Phil, that word blessed in the Hebrew is the word barak. You may know that, or baruch which means to empower, to prosper in all areas, spiritually, physically, socially, relationally, if you like, uh, materially, emotionally, and on. It means wholeness in every part. But Phil, God also says that not only would we be blessed, but that we would be a blessing, Mm. just as the Jews have been a blessing to mankind. Now, we see in creation that everything God created contains the seeds of more fruit. You think about that. You know, God says to everything he created, be fruitful and multiply. So blessing is the power to produce and reproduce. You know, for example, you take a tree. A tree can grow, but it's it's got a limit to what it can grow to. Mm. But even when it stops growing, it's produced fruit that has the seeds to go and reproduce again. Same with our lives. And uh, that kind of intimates this wonderful uh, reality that we're blessed to be a blessing. Oh, what a great way to put it. It kind of changes your perspective on that saying you hear quite often, blessed to be a blessing. What would you say, though, is the key to being blessed by God? Is there something that we have to do, or does God have some favorites that he likes to bless? I mean, you talk about the blessing over the nation of Israel. What's the key? Mm. No, the foundation of blessing is simply a right relationship with God. This is how God created man in the beginning, in a right relationship with himself. That's why he could bless him. And consequently, man was blessed as a result of that. But then, of course, sin entered, and as a result of that, Adam became disconnected from God, and the blessing was overturned, and the curse was the result of this disconnection. It brought death in all areas. You know, we said that the blessing actually permeates all areas of life. Well, the curse came into all areas. You know, first of all, the way that man perceived himself. You know, he was uh, immediately filled with a sense of shame. He, he knew that he was naked and had to cover up. Uh, he had a sense of guilt. He ran away and hid from God. Um, in his relationships with others, you know, the destruction came in. Adam was very happy to... Uh, point the finger at Eve and get her, you know, to, to, to cop the punishment. Mm. And not only that, you know, th- th- there's this kind of each one living for themselves. You know, God says, uh, your desire shall be towards the man and he will rule over you. In other words, people would take advantage of one another in relationships. 
And so we see this curse thing spreading to all areas physically and so on. But I guess one of the areas that it's most pronounced is, you know, God said that um, uh, all he had to do, all that man had to do initially was tend the garden. And, and, and so that meant kind of work the, work the soil and uh, cultivate it, serve it, dress it, and so on. And it would yield its fruit. It would just be a natural thing. It would just be working away on the soil. But then the toiling replaced the tending. Mm. You know, he had to work with the sweat of his brow. So what God intended to give us originally, we've got to work for now. That's the curse. Now, what this means is that God no longer rests in a fallen creation. You know, a lot of people get hung up on the Sabbath. Well, God did rest, you know, in the, on that seventh day because he could rest in a perfect earth. But could God now rest in a world that was fallen, that's full of, you know, violence and murder and rape and stealing and or war and all these sort of things, disease and that? Can God rest in that? No. He had a promise of a coming Messiah, a Savior, who would deliver the world from the curse, Mm. and he would rest in his son. So Jesus is like our Sabbath rest. So in the garden, he said to the the serpent, you know, the the, the seed of the woman's coming, and he will bruise your head. And then we find that uh, he covered uh, Adam and Eve with the skins of animals, which represent that one day we'll be covered with the righteousness of Christ. So the promise was Jesus would come and restore the blessing to us. Mm. And I guess when he came... He did kind of restore everything back to normal? Not exactly, (laughs) because that wouldn't have been good enough when you think about it. If we just had what Adam had in the beginning, then we'd go down the same track. If we just had innocence, then that innocence can be lost, which would result in the curse coming back upon us again. But what God promised was not innocent, but righteousness. So innocence means when we sin, that sin will be imputed to us. But when we are righteous, it means that God sees us as righteous. And even when we do fall and fail, Mm. he doesn't impute our sin to us. So what righteousness means is that the curse can be taken away. And the beautiful thing is this, Phil, that God promised through the Old Testament, through the Old Testament law, that Jesus would come and become a curse for us by hanging upon the tree. Do you remember that scripture? Yep. And uh, so... That would be how he would take the curse out of the world, by becoming a curse, by hanging upon a tree. Now, the amazing thing is, of course, that when Moses said that, he spoke about, you know, cursed is everyone who hangs upon a tree. Crucifixion was not a known form of capital punishment at Mm. that time. Mm. Uh, It was something that was later introduced by the Romans. Now, when Jesus came along, the Jews could have still stoned Jesus, but God did not allow that to happen. Uh, He allowed Jesus to be put to death by the Roman form of execution, which was crucifixion, fulfilling that scripture by which he would take the curse upon himself by hanging upon a tree. Because the Jews were pretty much out to get him, weren't they? That's right. And here's another thing. You know, if they had stoned him, another scripture could not have been fulfilled because the Bible says that not a bone of him would be broken. But if they'd stoned him, I mean, these these were big rocks. They Mm. were boulders, actually. Mm. Uh, He would have had many bones that would have been crushed. But it's like God oversaw this whole thing so that Jesus would die, but would die by crucifixion. And by by, by being crucified, he would hang upon a tree and take the curse that was due to us because of the broken law upon himself. So now we're not cursed, but we are blessed with believing Abraham. The the toiling has now been replaced again with tending. You know, we're living in the grace of God Mm. and we're living by faith in Jesus. So we're redeemed from that curse, aren't we? Yeah, that's right, and that means that we're not cursed, but we're blessed, once again, empowered to prosper in all those areas that we spoke of before, Mm. physically, spiritually, socially, materially, emotionally, wholeness in every part, and all because we are righteous, because we're in a right relationship with God. What an amazing salvation. It is, and uh, what's amazing is that it all is by grace. And I think it's just one other thought I can bring there, Phil, as we close today, and that is that that word barak comes from the root word berek, which means knee or the verb to kneel. And that's how we receive it. Nothing we do, we just come and in a receptive mode to receive what God wants to give us. It's a look at the blessing of Abraham this week and we'll continue our conversation tomorrow. Do join us. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book New Covenant, New Glory, which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au.
sbs.org.au. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.